Welcome to service with Keystone Powerhouse Ministries. I'm Pastor Mike. It's my wife, Pastor Audra. We're glad you can join us by video. And uh, we're going to be getting into the Word of God and talking about the covenant that God made with Noah. But first, let's open up in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we have this time, Lord, to come together to fellowship, Lord, to get into your word and to learn about your word and about you. And Lord, we just invite you, your power, your presence, and your spirit into this place tonight. And God, wherever folks are watching this video, whenever they're watching it, and however they're watching it, God, I pray that the anointing would just touch their hearts, Lord, that they would receive from you, Father, and receive what it is that you have uh, for each of us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before we get started, um, I'd like to just say, um, you know, I've shared on past videos that the Lord wants us to get our church going, and, and that's what we're doing uh, by any means possible. But uh, I just want to share with you, I have in my hand a contract for a rental agreement. It's a temporary facility. But amen, we're going to start. We're starting the church. We're going to start having Sunday services. And I pray that you would come out and join with us uh, when we do. It'll probably be in, in August of 2021 that we start these services. But I'll keep you posted. But I just wanted to share that good news with you because this is a contract. It's an agreement. It's a covenant between two different people two different individuals or two different entities. It's a covenant, it's an agreement, and that's what we're gonna be talking about tonight is a covenant that God made with Noah and also God made with the earth. We're gonna be talking about that a little bit tonight. So grab your Bibles and turn with us in the book of Genesis. And we're gonna start in chapter six. We're just gonna kinda of highlight a few scriptures and get into the covenants that God has made, and uh, not even all the covenants, just a, a couple of the covenants that he's made, but I hope that you enjoy this study tonight. Chapter 6, the book of Genesis, and starting at, uh, at verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination... Uh, the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord, or he regretted uh, the Lord, that he made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me, that I have made them. But Noah, listen, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now there's reasons that Noah found grace. Um, we've kind of been discussing some things here already uh, before we started the video, but there's things here, how Noah found grace. What, what are some ways that uh, we feel Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord? Anybody? Well, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. Okay. You know, so Noah, Noah walked with God. Amen. Amen. Yes, and that's the same way when he God told him to build the ark. He obeyed God. He obeyed God. He obeyed God. Yeah. And he, yeah, and he did. Right. So he 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 talked with God. He obeyed God. He was just. He was righteous. Also, the Bible says he was perfect in his generations. That doesn't mean that he was a perfect man, that he never messed up. But he was perfect in the fact that during this time, the Bible says that the sons of God or the angels came down and knew women. They slept with women and they had children that became giants and basically were freaks upon the earth. Right? And But see, Noah when the Bible says he was perfect in his generations, he was not corrupted 
by that evil seed. He was a natural born uh, person that, that did not have any of that in his lineage. He didn't have any of that corruption that would corrupt his blood or his flesh or anything about his being. So he was perfect in his generations. And he was, I believe he was the 10th uh, generation mentioned from the, from the creation of man, starting in Adam, going all the way through down to Noah. He was the 10th one in line but if you study that out, you'll see that he was, uh, that Adam had been born actually um, probably 1,500 years or, or so before Noah was born. So this was for a long time because people lived for a long time back then. And it was just becoming more and more corrupt by the time it got to Noah's time. When God said, when the Lord said this, that it repented him that he'd even made mankind or any of the animals. And just a side note here, why would he say that it repented him that he made the animals and such? Well, the animals, if you remember in the Garden of Eden, the serpent allowed the Satan to use him to deceive Eve. And so animals and such are bleeding Beings. They they have blood and they they can bleed and when when mankind forfeited his rights he became as the animals. See he was a step below God and higher than the angels. He was in a in a place between God and angels, but yet a fallen angel entered into an animal and deceived man and that brought man to where he bowed his knee to the angel. So it brought him down lower than uh, uh, what the angels were, you see. So this is why there was a curse on this. But listen, God, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, uh, somebody, if you would, you, uh, Sister Roger, do you want to read verses 17, 18, 19, and 20 for me? I have NIV. Oh, you have NIV? Okay. Let's, we'll see what it says. Of chapter 6? Yes. Okay. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, 18, 19, and 20. I'm going to bring flood waters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens, even cr every creature that has the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, every kind of animal, and every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. Okay. Here we see that God had commanded Noah to go into the ark with his wife, and Noah had three sons to take them and their wives, and then he was supposed to take two of every living uh, thing on that earth, on the earth, onto that ark, and why was he to do that? Why did God command him to take two of everything? So they could really to keep them alive. Now notice, did he take two males of each sort of animal? No. Nope. Did he take two females of each sort of animal? No. Nope. No. And why we didn't he just say, them. Noah and your sons? You know, leave those women. Just take you and your boys. Because two of the same kind, of the same gender, cannot reproduce. You can't reproduce, and that is God's intent, is to reproduce and replenish the earth. We're going to see that in just a moment. But that was God's intent, was to, he said right here, to keep them alive. Now, he said up there in verse 17, he said, I, I'm going to bring this flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh 
wherein is what? The breath of life. Remember when God created Adam and he breathed into his nostrils what? The breath of life. The breath of life. God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the Bible says he became a living soul. So that's what created to, for us to have a soul was that breath of life that came from God. And see here, the Lord is getting ready to bring a flood to destroy the flesh and in that flesh wherein wherein what wherein is in that flesh is the breath of life you see that breath of life couldn't be living in anything else the breath of life does not live in a tree it does not live in a blade of grass it does not live in the air it has to be contained within something that is uh, uh, movable, portable. <laughs> Our bodies, we can move and we have the breath of life. It, it allows us to, to go out. We have an option. We have a choice. We have a soul that allows us to make decisions. You know, are we going to do this or are we going to do that? You see, trees can't do that. Blades of grass can't do that. It, it has to be in flesh. That's wherein the breath of life is contained, is within the flesh. And here the Lord said, I'm going to destroy all that flesh, and all that, uh, all these things on the earth shall die. And, uh, but he, he did, uh, the Bible goes on to say uh, that Noah did these things. He got into the ark and everything. Uh, Brother Dennis, go ahead and read chapter 7, verses um, 14 and 15, if you would, uh, and 16. And every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, after uh, his kind, and every fowl after his kind and every bird uh, every, of every sort. And they went into the, uh, and they, and, and, excuse me, and they went into the, uh, into the Noah, into the ark, to, and to of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. Is that what it, it And go on to verse 16 oh. also. And, <clears throat> and they went, and, and they that, went in, went in male, female, and all flesh as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut, shut him in. All right, did we see that? It said here, every beast after his kind, the cattle, the creeping thing that, that creeps on the earth after their kind, every fowl, uh, they went in unto Noah into the ark. Now, um, I've heard it preached, and I, I believe it. I believe that Noah had that anointing to be able to speak to animals. I believe that. I believe that the anointing was there, that God just drew those animals to him, and he was able to lead them onto the ark. I, I believe that. I think that Noah had that ability, and I think that he was graced with the anointing to be able to do that for those animals to come. He didn't have to go around the world and track down all these animals, he, he would have had time to do that. God, I believe, brought those animals and Noah commanded them where to go and they went and Noah obeyed God and it says here that uh, two and two of all flesh wherein, listen, is the breath of life. Here we see that again. This is something that God gave to us is that breath of life and they went that went in they went in male and female of all flesh as God had commanded him and the Lord shut him in you see that God had commanded but the Lord if you remember some past videos about the Lord and when you see the capital L O R D when you see capital Lord spell that's Lord of Harvest. That is the Lord that um, 
<clears throat> what what is sown is reaped and and that's the one that sees to it that that's what happens that's the lord jesus does that he watches and he god watches over his word and he performs it and we're going to see this here in a second uh, what i'm talking about but it said as god commanded them what did he command them he commanded male and female not male and male not female and female now listen this may not be popular culture preaching okay this this may not be uh something that tickles the ears of all the all the in crowd now but god's intent from the beginning was man and woman okay man and man cannot reproduce woman and woman cannot reproduce it takes a male and it takes a female to reproduce which you'll see here is god's intent the lord is all about sowing and reaping he's all about planting and harvesting you'll see that throughout all the scripture in fact in the new testament the bible says that god is not mocked whatsoever a man soweth that shall he reap. And so here, we're seeing kind of the genesis, or the beginnings, of all time. It's happening right here, of the sowing and reaping. God wants reproduction. So if God wants reproduction and multiplication, what do you think that the enemy wants? Anybody? Destruction? To lay waste. To destroy. To destroy. The enemy comes not but what? For to steal, kill, to steal, kill, kill, and destroy. And destroy. See, but Jesus came to give us life and that more abundant. Abundant means more. That means multiply. It means growth. Are you catching where we're going here? You see? Side note, Satan, God of this world, Lucifer, before all before Adam was created, he was in charge of this planet Earth. There were civilizations and there were all kinds of things here and he, he had a throne on this earth and he said in his heart, the Bible tells us here, the prophet uh, Isaiah, I believe, says that the Lucifer said in his heart, he said, I will... Uh, ascend my my throne above gods and he was wanting to become god of everything not just ruler of this planet but he wanted to become god of everything and he had things in such upheaval and such chaos there was a flood before noah's flood now you have to really read the, the bible to figure this out and to see that but between genesis 1 in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and then Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep before the Spirit of God moved upon the waters. In between those two verses was a span of time. We don't know how long that was, but there was a flood that happened after God created the heavens and the earth. When Lucifer ruled, there was a flood that had to destroy all that stuff because of what Lucifer did because pride got in his heart and when pride came in, uh, pride goeth before a fall. The Bible tells us that. And when that pride came in, when he thought he was so beautiful and so, so much better than God, when that pride exalted his ego, if you will, he said in his heart, I'll exalt my throne above God's. Well, what happened? There's no one above God. Lucifer is not above God. He can't be. Well, what happened is chaos, destruction, void. These things happened because of what Lucifer did. Well, so learning from that, we're getting back on track now. Learning from that, the enemy wants to destroy and he wants to destroy God let me tell you something 
Lucifer, Satan does not care about you. He doesn't want you on his team. He's not saying, oh, I picked Johnny and I picked Sally because I know they're good players and I really like them. He doesn't do that. He just wants to get back at God because that's how he is. Because he thinks he's better and he wants to outdo God. That's always what Satan does. We're just, people are just pawns to him. They're just pawns. That's right. Like Sister Roger said, they're just pawns in his game. He doesn't care if you go to heaven or hell. He doesn't care about you. Listen, he doesn't care about you. He, he cares about destroying the plan of God. That's what, that's what the devil wants to do, is destroy the plan of God. Well, we're reading here in the Holy Scripture of God's plan this whole time was to re reproduce and replenish. The earth had to be plenished first in order to replenish the earth that's what we were talking about a second ago. He wants us to replenish the earth. So that's why we just read this here, that uh, they went in male and female. Why? So they could live. Amen? Turn with me over to chapter 8 now. Sister Mary, could you read, would you read um, verses 16 and 17, 18 and 19 for me? Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh, both of thou and and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful, and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. And every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and what, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kind, even went forth out of the ark. All right. So look there. Now you this you may say, oh, Pastor Mike, you, you can't preach. Well, yeah, this is the word of God, so we preach this. That <laughs> the Bible says that they may breed abundantly. That means have babies. That means replenish the earth. Go forth and multiply, because the Lord. Listen, the Lord of the harvest wants harvest. He wants to see the, the crops grow. He wants to see seed sown, and he wants to see uh, things grow so that there would be harvest to not be empty-handed, so that we can have abundance. So it's, it's all over right here, and, and people talk bad. They say, oh, those prosperity preachers and those guys just want your money and all that. Listen, prosperity is God's intent. To prosper, it's not just money, although money is part of prosperity, but you can prosper in the spirit. You can prosper in love. You can prosper in joy. You can prosper at your job. You can prosper within your family. You can prosper just in your, in your hobbies. But say, I, I enjoy working with wood. I haven't done that for a long time, but I enjoy doing that. And you know, when I was younger, and especially in school, I would make wooden projects, and when I completed that, I felt so good because I prospered in what I set my hand to do. This is what God's intent is. God is not against prosperity. God wants us to prosper, and He wants us to multiply. He wants us to grow. Are you seeing this in the scripture yet? This this is good stuff here. And you can call it a prosperity message if you want to. But it's the covenant that God made with Noah is what, what's going on here. You see, because Noah found grace, you see, 
and he found grace in the eyes of the Lord, so he wasn't destroyed, but yet he was the one that all of us came from. Think about that. All of us are related somehow, tracing back to Noah. Whether you were of any of his three sons, it all came back to Noah. You see? So, we have that grace within us as well. And he even says here uh, that Noah built, uh, going on there in chapter 8, he built an altar to the Lord. He took of every clean beast and every clean fowl, and he offered burnt offerings to the Lord. And listen, the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. He said, I'm not going to curse the ground. Now what happened when Adam messed up, him and Eve, they got kicked out of the garden. And what did God say? He said, from now on, the ground is cursed, didn't he? He said, the ground is cursed for your sake because of what you did. And you're going to have to basically earn your living by the sweat of your brow. And that's what, that's what preachers preach nowadays, is that, well, if Adam hadn't messed up, we'd have been on easy street, you know, and women wouldn't have to have labor pains and all this stuff, you know. Well, what did God just say here? He said, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. Now that to me kind of sounds like the curse is reversed. Chapter 8 and verse uh, 21. He said, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more living, uh, anything living as I have done. He said, I'm not going to do this again. I'm not going to, we're not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to destroy it because he realizes even though man was created in his image, man is not God Almighty. We're created in his image. But because we have a soul, we're able to make our own decisions. We are able to know right from wrong. And we can choose right, or we can choose wrong. He wants us to choose right, you see. But we have the ability to choose wrong, even though it's not right. <laughs> but we have that ability. But anyway, he says here... He's not a dictator. Right, he's not a dictator. He doesn't dictate what we can do or not do, or what we can say or not say, or feel how we... He doesn't tell us that. He doesn't. Right. He let, that's where the free will comes in. Amen. All right, don't you? Uh, also, if you go back to the Garden of Eden, God gave uh, Adam choice, him and Eve. He gave them those two trees. He gave them choice. Yeah. They could, they could do, go and eat that or not eat that. Right. If they ate that, they would die. Right. Spiritually. Yeah. And that's what, what you just talking about, God's will. He, uh, he give everybody a, a will to, you right. know. And God, just like wherever you go, you've got uh, instructions, uh, you know, uh, how to do this and how to do that. And, and then you've got uh, uh, free will, you know, where they, got, they have rules, different places. Yeah. You see. Yeah. And so... God, he, uh, what you said a while ago in uh, the, the sixth chapter of Revelation, it says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Yes. That's, what we, that's why you can get saved. Uh -huh. His grace. Right. If it wasn't for grace, you couldn't get saved. Amen. If it wasn't for Jesus, went to the cross and died yeah. and rose the third day. You know, it was his grace. Right. When they spit upon him on the cross and made fun of him and, and said all kinds of things and stuck their tongue out at him, he said, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they do. The grace of now, God. Now, that take a lot of grace. Yes. And somebody come up and spit in your face. Uh-huh. You know, 
and say, and 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 what you'll do then, you have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Right. I think the grace of God is wonderful. Amen. And then that sixth chapter where you're talking about the same says, and God said to Noah, uh, wait a minute, over here I think it was, I can find it, and that's something, devil you ain't going to do that, you're not going to take it. Well, God's grace is it's a, it it truly is amazing grace when you think about what he affords us by what uh, you know what I'd say what we put him through but there's nothing we can do that's going to surprise the Lord <laughs> there, we, we can't shock him and he can't say oh I can't believe you just did that I, I did not see that coming we don't surprise God that way you see so I'd say by what we put him through but he already knows what you're going to do before you do it right. so it's not that he's surprised but his grace see the grace of God is what gives us the ability not to sin it's his grace because naturally natural born people are sinners they, they you're you're born sinner now you're saying oh are you saying Pastor Mike that that these babies are sinners and all that. No, I'm not saying that the babies are sinners, but babies grow up to be sinners. And what the grace of God does is allows us, it affords us the ability to not have to walk in a life of sin. You see, it, that's what His grace does for us because, um, <laughs> like the old song says, because He lives... I can face tomorrow. Well, it's because he died, because the grace that he showed us by going to the cross and taking that punishment within his body for our sakes. It was that grace that we can turn to and say, Jesus, help me do what you said. If, if they smite me on my right cheek, let me give them the left cheek also. If they ask me for my coat, I'll give them my coat and I'll give them my shirt as well. You know, it's that that's the kind of grace that God affords us to be able to show to others. It, that's the grace of God. Amen. He went on to say here in chapter 8, after he uh, says that uh, he'll not again curse the ground, he goes on to say, listen, 8.22, Genesis 8.22, he says, While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease and people say oh well i just don't know if if these crops will or if these crops will come up this year and uh, i don't know if it's going to ever turn into summertime because it is so cold you know or i don't know if winter's ever going to come because it's so hot and people might say, oh, this day is so long, I don't know if night's going to come. And, you know, people in Alaska might wonder if day's going to come, you know, since they're in darkness quite a bit. But um, while the earth remains, listen, seed time and harvest. While the earth, if, if you're still six foot above the ground and you're living on this earth, the earth still remains. The earth hasn't blown up and you've gone on to Mars or someplace. You're still on this earth. It's always seed time and harvest. Now, you say, oh, this is starting to sound like prosperity again. Yes, it is because it's God's intent that seed time and harvest. Seed, you plant seed, you wait the time for the, the time for it to uh, to grow and then you're going to harvest okay seed time and harvest you're going to plant seed you know when when a woman conceives a child in her womb that child doesn't come the next day no she's walking around for months <laughs> and carrying that and the whole time that baby is growing inside of her womb Amen. That's the time 
the seed that had been planted, now is the time, but guess what? At delivery, that's harvest. You see, there was seed, time, and harvest. The farmer in the field goes out, he, he cultivates the, the earth and digs it up and, and does what he needs to in the, in the dirt, and then they scatter seed, they put out seed however they do it with their machines or by hand, they do that, they cover it back up with the earth, with the dirt, and then that seed gets down in the soil and the rain pushes it down and it starts to germinate. It actually dies out in there and it starts breaking up, but when it starts to break, there's a new little sprout that starts coming up. You see, and then that sprout is saying, I want to find some light because it's dark. It's dark and it's wet. And listen, there's, there's a message in this. It's in darkness, and it's searching for the light. And it's, it's, it's growing towards the light. And eventually that seed, it says, okay, I'm going to just kind of take root right here, but I'm going to keep sprouting, and I'm going to keep going, and eventually you're going to see this little sprout starting to stick up out of the ground. And what is it doing? It's searching for light. It's searching for light, people. It wants light. And that's what we are when sinners, when sinners aren't saved and they've not given their life to Christ. They're searching. They're searching for something and they don't always know what it is. But we know what it is. That God is light. And in Him is no darkness at all, nor shadow, nor variables uh, of turning. There's, there's nothing within Him that is dark. He is all light. In fact, when we get to that heavenly city, the Bible says that there's no need for the sun because the sun is the light thereof. You see, Jesus is the light that we'll be able to see by. And when you're in darkness, you want to see light. And that's what seed does is it starts growing towards the light. Did you have something? Or? Oh, I was just going to comment that Satan has people so blinded over things, even Christians blinded about prosperity. Yeah. Because he's not about prosperity. He's about death. He's about destruction. He's about any way to destroy anything that God has planned. Yeah. So if whatever he's got Christians, pastors, he's got them fooled. Yeah. Thinking that you know, this prosperity thing is not a good thing. Right. So, when it, he's deceitful. He it, he deceives the brethren. Yeah. And when I say brethren, I mean brother and sister, you know, man and woman. He deceives it. And he wants to keep you down, oppressed. He wants to keep you away from reaching up toward the light. He wants you to keep you away from that light. He he wants you to not know the fullness thereof. The fullness of Christ. The fullness of God. The fullness of what he has for you to come. So, whenever someone says, oh, there's that prosperity preacher. Say, oh, thank you, Jesus, for that prosperity Amen. preacher. Thank you, Jesus, for that man or that woman standing before me or being able to say this is the truth right. this is life this is light this is not darkness this is not you're not stuck underground and that's sometimes there's there's seeds that die mm -hmm. because they don't believe the word of god yeah. because god has or not god i'm sorry satan has deceived them for so long and they've been preached to for so long and taught that prosperity is not of God. It's just of greed. No, it's not. God wants you to prosper. He wants you to prosper in every area of your life. Think about it. If you have a broke and disgusted, broke down pastors of, of your church where he's driving in his car that's barely got a tire on there and his car sounds like when you turn it off it's going to explode 
and, but you are trying to believe for yourself for a new car and for you know a better way of life and if that pastor comes in and is he's like well bless god for my rags okay well if that's what you have for right now bless god for your rags but the thing of it is god doesn't want you just to live in rags all the time how are you going to be that light how are you going to show that there's more than just what you see because god has stuff beyond what we can see yeah that's where faith comes in that's where that's part of his covenant is this to have us to have faith in that covenant right. that we can grow and that we can see the light and that we can become prosperous we come like you said earlier prosperous in our health prosperous in our minds prosperous in joy and peace yeah. and in um every in every fruit of the spirit prosperous in love because god is love and he wants us to be pr as prosperous as he is. It's a good news. Right. It's the good news yeah. gospel, not just half news uh, gospel. It's not well, you know. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. No, it's light. It's love. Because Jesus came to set the captives free, and those that are free are free indeed. There's no bond. There's no darkness. It's all light. Yeah. Those preachers ought to be like Paul when he says, follow me, follow him. You see, Paul said this. He said, in every state, whatever state he's in, <laughs> whether it's Missouri or Kansas or where, no, I'm kidding. But whatever state he's in, to be content. Now, Paul didn't always have abundance. And guess what? I've not always had abundance. <laughs> but I'll tell you, when, when I have stuff, I feel better. My mind is more at ease. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people say... Oh, you just can't trust God when you have enough. And when you've got plenty of money, then you don't rely on God. That's a bunch of bull. In fact, I find myself, when I've got, when I've got extra money, you know, after the bills are paid and I've got extra money, and thank God when, when we're able to pay our bills and then you got a few bucks left over, I find myself thanking God even more. It's not that I'm, I'm having to say, oh, God, would you please supply, you know, which I've had to do that. I've had to say, Lord, I don't know what we're going to do. I mean, there's been several times, you know, I've been abased. But, you know, when, when you prosper and when, you, when you've got more than enough, the El Shaddai God, the God that is more than enough, when you have him on your side, your mind is at ease where you can actually praise and thank God. For the abundance that he's given you it's not that i'm going out and just blowing my money on this and that because i've got extra money i'm thanking god that i've got extra money amen i don't just go blow it and then then come to god oh god i just i blew it all no you don't that's not true people that think that way are not thinking in god's way okay we need to do, read the red and do what he said people i mean come on so going on here, he said, uh, in chapter 9, he, he said, verse 1, God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So that was a command that God gave to Noah and to his sons. They said, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. And then he goes on and, and he kind of talks about the blessing here, saying, The fear of you... And the dread of you shall be upon every beast. You can read through that, but it's basically, you know, if, if, if you ever go walking through the woods, which I have several times, if animals see me, you know what? Usually they run the other direction. Why? That's what it's because of this blessing that's on mankind, that the fear and the, the dread of me, well, that's what makes them run away. You see, this is so what it's saying is they're not going to come and attack you because they're going to be afraid of you. That's what he's saying here. So that's that's a blessing right there, especially in Noah's day. He didn't have he didn't have a 45 that he could <coughs> carry on his side and, and just kill a beast when it came to him. No, I mean, they had used knives and staves and things like that. And, you know, 
But here's the thing that uh, he goes on, but he said right here, in, go on down uh, to verse 7, where he said, And you be ye fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. He wants abundance in the earth. He wants abundant harvest. Abundance. And the only way for abundance to happen is to sow, sow, sow. I'm, am I right about it? That's right. You're not going to have the abundance, and I'm not talking about just money here, but you're not going to have abundance. Listen, if Jesus said, do to your neighbor what you'd have them do to you, what we call the golden rule, do unto others like you'd have them do to you, I don't want people treating me mean. No. I don't want people smacking me upside the head. No. Right? I mean, do you? Mm -hmm. I don't think any of us do. We want people to treat us kind and nice and with love, so we have to sow that. We have to show that love and sow what it is that we want others to do to us. Um, but he said, Go forth abundantly in the earth, multiply the area. Now listen, God spake to Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you. Verse 9. He has established a covenant. And what is it? And with every living creature that is with you. Fowl of the fowl, the cattle, every beast of the earth with you. From all that go out of the ark to every beast. Listen, there's a covenant. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more. By the waters of a flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. He's never going to bring a flood upon the earth to destroy the whole earth again. You say, well, what about this flood in this place or this flood over here? That's not the whole earth. There's floods. When it rains heavy, you all know it floods. But never again will the earth be flooded with water. He just said, by waters of flood. Verse 12, And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. Verse 13, I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and what? The earth. The earth. That's a covenant between him and the earth now. The rainbow. He made, yeah, it's the rainbow, and it'll come to pass uh, when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in a cloud, or the rainbow, shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And so uh, he said there, he said to Noah, this is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that's upon the earth. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. Of those three boys. But I uh, want you to come back here. You got some, Brother Dennis? <laughs> In Genesis 1, I'll just read this. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly. Now look, look at that. The waters. Yeah. Moved, uh, moving creatures that have life, fowl, and many flying above the earth and upon the uh, firmament of heaven. God created great great whales. Yeah. I want you to get that in mind. So they got, got to come up with something. Every living creature uh, moving, which was in the waters, the waters brought forth every uh, winged fowl after its kind, and God saw it was good. Now here is the first blessing. 
Now yep. here's the first blessing God gave. Now listen. And God bless them saying, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the waters and the sea, and let the fowls multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the, the fifth day. Right. Yeah. Now watch this. The first blessing. The first blessing had three gifts from God. Fruitfulness. Uh, bear fruit. The power of whole uh, carnation. And the watch this. If I can pronounce this word. M-U-L-T-P-L-I-C A-T-I-O-N. Anybody can pronounce that? Where are you at? I didn't catch all the letters. Multiplication. Watch this. Occupy, uh, it says, uh, uh, in Hebrew, a replacement, it, that, that says, no doubt there has been fish and fowl and Lucifer rule in, in Jeremiah 4, 23, 26. But they were destroyed because there was no uh, sunlight during the flood of, of 1 and 2. Jeremiah 4, 23, 26, therefore in Genesis 1 and 2, was no longer five uh, to, uh, to, uh, to that. Noah's flood, which did destroy, did, did not destroy the sea, uh, the fish. They're the ones that came through. They didn't drown in, in, in the fish. God reserved them. That was a blessing food for them when they come out of their ark. The difference between the devil and what he was doing. Yeah. Ah. So that is good. That was, and that, like that says in Genesis, the first blessing. Right. Amen. He said it was the first blessing. Now he even took care of. of he would took care of Adam at the time if he hadn't sinned. Uh -huh. But he was driving out. He go out. They drove him out right. for what he did. Yeah. Yeah. You know they must have ate a lot of fish. For, yeah. for a while because there wasn't that many other animals. Yeah, well, the animals but that they had on the ark. Because they had reproduced that took time, and then during that time, those people had to eat them. But that just differs in, in what happened. That's why <coughs> that's why God, the second flood, <coughs> see, God, the earth was already here made. God just changed it. Mm -hmm. Because at, at, at the devil messed it up. Right. Yeah. The devil messed up what God had created, and that's what, so God had to change it, and then he changed it again. Then, <coughs> well, he just took the animals that he already created yeah. to multiply. Yep. And, right. and he took all the fish. The fish didn't die when they're doing the flood. Yeah, Stop and think about that. Ground the fish. <laughs> so, so we see that blessing, and we see the blessing coming, excuse me, upon Noah's life here, but pay attention here. What is the token that God gave? He made a covenant with the earth and, you know, we're, we came from the earth. What is the token that he gave to, to show Noah that he would not do this again? The rainbow. The rainbow. And that's what I want to kind of get at to kind of finalize this message is the rainbow. Now, there's, you know, the rainbow, when I was growing up, you know, you'd, you'd go in art class, and you'd take your crayons, and you'd draw a rainbow and bring it home, and, you know, mom and dad would put it on the refrigerator, and oh, what a good job you did, and all that. But, you know, today, the rainbow takes on a whole different meaning when people see a rainbow. You know, people... They, they see a rainbow, and what is that representing? The LGBTQ community. Right. The LGBTQT, whatever letters are in there. It represents that community. And let me ask you this. Within that community, how many, okay, the L, I mean, it stands for lesbian. Uh, the G stands for gay. Uh, the B is for bisexual, uh, the Q is for queer, the T for transgender. How many of these, uh, let me ask you this, 
let's just say lesbians. <laughs> Can they reproduce? No. Can gays reproduce? No. no. So what's going on here is they, and listen, I'm telling you the truth. They have adopted God's token to Noah by saying, I'll never again flood the earth to destroy all flesh. Why did God bring that flood in the first place? Because of, all the because of what was going on and because of that kind of living was going on during the time of Noah is why he brought the flood in the first place. Now, how brazen is it to just blatantly put that in God's face? Look what we're going to do with your rainbow. Look at the sign we're using your rainbow for, and you're not going to destroy us. <laughs> yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? That's all they're doing it is a rebellion, and rebellion is as witchcraft. That's what the Bible says. That's right. It's in rebellion that they do this. I had another thought here. It'll come to me. No, that's okay. But the rainbow they're using to represent their community, okay? Now, listen. I love these people. Don't get me wrong. I do not hate the LGBTQT community. I do not hate those people. I love those people. I work with people. I know people that's part of that community. We, we have to love them. They're family. They're friends. But we don't have to stand for what they're standing for. And some of them don't even know that's what they're standing for. Some of them are just confused and don't even know that. But when you get down to the roots of it, you remember the roots, the seed, and it taking root. When you get down to the roots of these things, you'll find that they're blatantly showing God, they're basically smacking him in the face with his rainbow, with his token, by saying, look, we're going to use this as our flag. Oh, and the other thing, the pride. Remember, they're all about gay pride or whatever, the pride. You'll see that on there. And why is that? God hates pride. Well, shouldn't we be proud of ourselves? Yes, you should be taking pride in yourself. You should have enough pride within yourself to, to get up every day, to fix yourself up. Don't lay in bed all day like, a, like those people that don't get up. <laughs> get up, fix yourself up. Do the best you can with yourself. Take pride in yourself, yes. But don't exalt yourself. See what happens when these groups, and I'm not talking about just the LGBT, QT community, but other groups that, that form an alliance, and uh, whether it's the KKK, you know, we've seen those uprising, we've seen Nazis and skinheads, and uh, we had one approach, we talked about that the other day, uh, approach at our place uh, the other day, I had a black man at my house the other day, and we were talking at, with him, and, and one of these guys came in trying to intimidate that guy. Now listen, I don't go for that. I'm a white guy, but I'm not a skinhead. I don't care if you got hair or not. You don't intimidate other people. That's a no-no. None of us are above others. But when you have organizations like this, or the Black Lives Matter, you get organizations like this, and pride is, is their cause. And that was the cause that got Lucifer kicked out of heaven. That's exactly what happened, is pride was found within him and he said within himself I'll exalt my throne above God's. Now listen if you're a person living in, in that it's sin if you're living in that sin there is hope God came God sent Jesus to save us. You see he, in fact the Bible says that for God so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, through Jesus, might be saved. You see, so if you're living in, in that life and, and you're saying, well, Pastor Mike, I don't know what to do. 
Well, I'm glad that you're asking because I've got the answer and the answer is Jesus. You see, not only does Jesus have the answer, Jesus is the answer. Now, we talked all about this and about Noah tonight and, and kind of in a roundabout way and made it back to the covenant that he had and how the enemy, how Satan has deceived so many people. He's deceived people in government and, and trying to get even God's people to accept this because he wants to deceive us. He wants to steal this blessing from us. He wants to kill what God is doing in our lives. He wants to destroy God's plan for you and I, which is abundance in the earth and to abundantly reproduce. And he has blinded the eyes of them that are refusing to see. But if you're wanting to see tonight, and I pray that you do, or maybe maybe you're not part of that community, but you've just never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I'd like for you just right now to bow your head. I'm going to pray a prayer. I'd like for you to repeat that prayer with me, and, uh, and you'll become born again. So if you would, just bow your head, close your eyes, and pray, Father God, I come to you in the name of your son, Jesus. Lord, you said if I confess my sins, that you would forgive me of my sin, and that you would cleanse me from all unrighteousness. So Lord, I confess right now that I'm a sinner in need of your saving grace. And Lord, you also said in your word that if I believed in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, I would be saved. So Father, I believe that you raised your son Jesus from the dead and I confess right now that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life thank you for saving me thank you for loving me I give you praise and glory in Jesus name amen you prayed that prayer you become born again now we need to start changing. If you've been in a lifestyle you're not supposed to have been in, start changing. I'm not going to say that it's easy. Sometimes these things take time. Sometimes they're, they're hard. Sometimes they're quick like that. Strive towards it. The Lord's wanting us to be perfect like He's perfect. He wants us to live in abundance like He lives in abundance. He wants us to be fruitful and to multiply, not just with offspring and with people, or not just with money, but with every aspect of your life. He wants us to be prosperous and to grow. You know, where we said, we mentioned earlier that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. That's what God wants for us. He wants us to be light and wants no darkness at all. So we have to strive towards that. we got to be trying to do that. So in this next coming few days, think, reread these scriptures that we went over. Think about the covenant that God made and how he blessed Noah. You know, we've not even gotten into other covenants that he made with people, but we talked about Noah and what he did with Noah and how he saved him and his family, which basically produced the, all the people on the earth. But think on these things, ponder them, reread them, and there will be a description in the, uh, the description box down there. You can find out a little bit more about the ministry and about this message. Also, keep us in prayer as uh, we're, uh, we're getting this contract going. Amen? Keystone's, Keystone's rising up again. And so I thank you for your support. I thank you for your prayers. Uh, there's information, send your offerings, send your tithe. If this is your church, send your tithe in, and amen. We will uh, accredit that to your account, and it will be put to the ministry. Amen. 
So send that in. Be a blessing to us. I hope that we are a blessing to you. And until next time, remember, God loves you. We love you. And Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen.